All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to our lesson. So um, last time we've had our lesson on um, the first two chapters of the subject, and today um, I would like to come back with the third lesson in which we are going to explore the Vietnamese manufacturing culture. And um, you might see that today we, uh, we changed um, the way we interact a little bit. Last time you have to watch a video um, on Facebook, and then uh, we, we would have some discuss further discussion on the topic. But today, because we are interacting um, on live, um, so I would like to, to hear from you as much as possible, okay? So if you have any concerns or if I'm speaking too fast, if I'm going too fast, just um, leave a comment and then I will slow down. Um, for this topic today, even though the, the name of the unit is Vietnamese Manufacturing Culture, but um, we are going to explore, firstly, the sub-regions of Vietnam. Um, you might wonder why we start with looking into the different sub-regions of Vietnam before moving into the manufacturing culture of the country. Um, the answer would, would lies in the later part, but um, to give you um, to, to, to start with, just um, the initial explanation would be like, when you understand the different features of the sub-regions of Vietnam, then you will be able to, to understand and to analyze the manufacturing culture and, and even other aspects of the culture of the regions. Because as you know, um, our country as, is, in, um, is like the S shape and it um, runs from the north to the south, and you, you know that the culture in, in the north would be so different from that in the south. And in order to understand deeply about the cultures of um, different parts of the country, the essential thing is we need to understand the, um, the features in terms of geography, in terms of the people, in terms of the economy and other factors. So that is the reason why we will start with exploring the sub regions of Vietnam before moving into the manufacturing culture. Um, for the later part, we're going to talk in more details about the crop villages in Vietnam. Um, and this topic will be very, quite important because later on, after we um, come back to school, then you will be assigned to do your first field trip. And the topic of the first field trip will be to explore the crop villages in Vietnam, especially the crop villages that you know around Hanoi. Okay, so um, to start with, I would like to invite you um, to go with me on a journey from the north to the south of Vietnam today. Um, even though we, we would not like travel real, but I would like to invite you to look at the map uh, for about 10 seconds. I'm going to show you the map of, of Vietnam, which you are very familiar with, right? for about 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, please answer some questions about the map and also show me your understanding of our country as well. Okay, so here comes the map. All right, 10 seconds, please. Okay, now um, to check your, just to check your um, short term memory, but here the answer appears on the screen already. Just want to check how many regions are there in Vietnam? In the map, as you see, there are eight regions, right? Um, and as you know, these eight regions with or we can call sub-regions with different features in terms of um, um, geography, in, in terms of the location, in terms of its people, would um, decide the features or the differences in the manufacturing culture of each region. So um, let's see whether you can identify which regions is there on the photos. The very first one, as you see here, okay? Can you tell me what um, the, the highlighted region is? If you can remember the name from the map, 
or you can even tell from the, the position of the, uh, of, of the region, um, from the direction and also from the position, we can tell that it is the, the northwest. Okay? The second one, very close to the northwest, it must be also in the north, but not, not to the west, but to the east. So it is the northeast. Okay? The third one, a very um, important sub-region of Vietnam that we are going to explore later on is here. Next to the northeast, next to the northwest, and also um, has the connection with the East Sea. Can you tell what it is? Okay, if you can, it's the Red River Delta. All right. The fourth one that I would like to mention here the highlighted one is a very narrow one, downwards from the, um, the Red River de Delta to the south. But well, only half, halfway to the south. Okay. It is a very special region um, with quite special features that, that, that is unlike any other region. Um, it's the north central coast of the country. Right? So these are the first four regions that we're going to explore. The next four, coming up next, is um, a very special region um, which has the border with Cambodia. Can you tell the name? It is the Central Highland, very famous for, what do you know about the Central Highland? Very famous for coffee, right? Okay, the next one. Um, next to the Central Highland, to the east, and um, it has a very long coastline. Yeah, the sea is the the South Central Coast. All right. Next one, we are now coming downwards to the south. Is the that's the southest, which with the very important city, which is Ho Chi Minh City, and the very last one, um, that is the Mekong River Delta. So. Um, we have all together eight sub-regions to explore and in your book you can see that um, the, the regions, the features of each of the regions is, is presented, in the, are presented in the book according to that order. So going from north to south and with each of the sub-regions you will see the description in terms of geography, in terms of its people and in terms of the economy. However, in order to help you um, capture the key points. Um, today I'm going to, to change the, 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 the order a little bit. I'm going to uh, explore some of the, um, the regions together. I'm going to put the regions together and, and try to compare them so that we can see the difference. Okay. So to start with, um, also um, a small quiz, when you look at these names, can you tell which sub-regions we are talking about? With Điện Biên, Sơn La, Hòa Bình, Lai Châu. If there are anyone from, um, in our class are from these provinces, I think you can easily tell that we are talking about the Northwest. All right. So as you know, the Northwest is, um, sorry, it's, um, the, the Northwest is the the first one that I'm going to mention, and for the second that, um, that we're going to compare with the Northwest is the Northeast, which provinces such as Hà Giang, Cao Bằng, Bắc Cạn, Lạc Sơn, Tuyên Quang, Thái Nguyên, and three others. So we have in total nine provinces in this sub-region. So what are the similarities and differences between these two um, sub-regions because they are both in the north. Um, just the, the, the first difference that we can notice is that one is in the west and the other is in, to the east of the country. So um, with the northwest, if you imagine the map, you will see that um, it is it has the border with which country? The upper one, China, of course, right? And to the to the west is Laos. So the Northwest is a region or a sub-region that has a very uh, important role in terms of national defense. 
So because it has the border with the two countries. And also, uh, in terms of geography, you can see here that um, it is the mountainous area with rough terrain, um, a lot of high mountains. It normally would run from the northwest to the southeast. So from, yeah, from the west to the east. Um, what the north is, uh, it has complex topography with a tropical climate and normally influenced by the northeast monsoon and differentiation in climate. So um, the north is, even though it's in the north, and it also has high uh, mountains and hills, but then because it, it has this, the east sea in the east, so the climate here will be a little bit, will be different, will be different from that in the northwest. And um, in this area, they can find, we can find a large amount of fossils and natural resources, especially coal and metal. And mentioning coal, um, you know that a very um, a, the province that has that has that is famous for coal mining. Anyone from that province can tell the name. It's Guangning, right? Okay. So um, in terms of geography, and next moving on to the people uh, in the northwest, you see that if you go to the provinces up there you can see that there's a good mix of ethnic minority groups like um, the Hmong, Zhao, Thai, Mường, Tây, especially, um, etc. And they live in different areas of, of the regions, um, ranging from the low valleys, the mountain sides, and the high hills. Okay. Why in the northeast? Um, you see that also we have a, quite a lot of um, ethnic groups here and even they, uh, people even say that this is one of the most diverse um, ethnic structure. Uh, the, I mean, the region has the most diverse ethnic structure with about 40 ethnic groups living together. So um, the living standard of this region or it is said to be higher than that of the entire country because this region has a lot of advantages in terms of position and also in terms of, um, um, of, of the people in order to develop a comprehensive economy, in which we would talk about later. Mm. So for the economy, um, you know that in the Northwest, as we mentioned earlier, that it's mostly mountainous area, right? So um, that's why the economy would base mostly on wet rice cultivation on terrace paddy fields, as you can see very nice um, view, very nice fields um, in the northwest if you go to visit um, provinces like Viet Bien or Sơn La up there. Um, and besides the wet rice cultivation here, uh, people also rely on animal husband, uh, husbandry or handicraft um, production or hunting, farming, or even fishing, yeah, for, to earn their living. And also because there are mountains and forests up there, so cultivation and exploit, uh, exploitation of the resources in the forest also help people here to earn a better living. Um, to compare with the North East, where there are a lot of natural resources um, and, and the conditional position or the advantageous position, then they can develop a comprehensive economy in the region. So you can see that um, here in this region, they have quite stable tropical ecological system um, in order to develop agriculture and forestry. Besides, the, the resources of fossils and, and metals also give, uh, create the opportunity for people here to do mining and processing uh, mineral industry for these industries to prosper, um, and also with the um, with the position uh, with position next to the sea, you can see that the services and trade in this region um, are, are quite developed, especially in big in cities like, uh, for example, in Guangling, you have Lam, and um, in some other provinces as well. So services and trade is also a um, um, also, one of the advantages that the region has in, developed, in developing the economy of the region. So, um, with the first two, with the very first two regions, you can see that the, the way that the people, the economy of the region is closely, 
is very closely related to the features in terms of, um, of geography and the people. And uh, to move on to the next part, can you guess which region we're going to touch upon? Also in the north. So in the north, we've also already talked about the northwest and the northeast. And now the one, the region, which is in the middle, um, that has provinces such as Bắc Ninh, Hanam. All right, what else? What else did you can tell? Hai Phong, Hưng Yên, Ninh Bình, Thái Bình, Hải Dương. All right, I guess that you can guess right now which province we are talking about. Um, Nam Định, Vị Phúc. And the very last one, I believe that if I tell you the name, then you can tell the name of the region of the region right away. Okay, it is the Red River Delta. And um, the region that we are going to compare with this, this one is the Mekong River Delta with these provinces. So um, you can see that there are a lot of names appearing here. All right, um, in total, if you can count, we have 13 provinces in this region, which makes, uh, makes the region one of the largest region in, in Vietnam, okay? So let's see how, what are the similarities and differences between these. If you look at the, firstly at the location, so for the Red River Delta, the location, uh, as you see, is in, in the north of Vietnam, right? And it's next to the northwest and the northeast. And it also has the East Sea on, on the right-hand side on the, in the east. Why the Mekong River Delta? It has, it is in the, the most southern part of the country. And um, it is close to one of the most important economic region of the country which is here, the, the southeast region. And it has the, the Gulf of Thailand on this side, and also the, the sea here to the east. So uh, in terms of geography, both of the regions are, uh, has quite flat topography with dense rivers and streams. Um, as you can see in the north, in the Red River Delta, we have the Red River, right? And in um, the Mekong River, of course, we have the Mekong River. Um, and here, with, um, in the north, it, it has a quite long coastline with beautiful beaches and, and favorable places to develop fishery and, and also um, tourism. In the Mekong River Delta, they, we even have like longer um, coastline and especially with the with the humid tropical climate, um, with it, um, equa equatorial features, that the um, the the climate here is very favorable to uh, for agri to develop agriculture um, and and also other industry. Especially, we will see later um, about fisheries or some other um, kind of industry in this region. Now, for the people. Um, of course, we see that mostly in this um, area, mostly king people would live here. And um, in the Red River Delta, there, only a, there is only a small proportion of Mueang ethnic minority group living in some of the mountainous area. While in the Mekong River Delta, we have Khmer, Khmer Chinese, and Cham, um, who are some of the ethnic, um, ethnic minority groups living there. The population is quite dense in both regions. And the economy, as you can see here, the economy in both regions are uh, both developed. And the, they are two of the regions that has the mostly developed economy in the country with, um, for example, in the Red River Delta, they have comprehensive development of agriculture, fishery, forestry, production. And um, in the Mekong River Delta, some of these strengths include, as you can see here, fishery um, and other industries like, um, like textiles, garments, 
construction materials, chemicals, or especially tourism. So great potential for tourism in this area. So far we've covered four regions already, right? We have four left. And I'm going to compare only one more pair, which is, can you tell the name please? I think it's very clear that we are going to talk about the North Central Coast. And of course, to compare this, we must choose the next region, which is the South Central Coast. So these two, um, these two regions, if you, if you think back about the map, is the, the narrow corridor of the country, right? Going from the north to the south. Um, with the geography, in these two uh, reg regions are quite different. If you can see, uh, if you look at the north central coast, there are complex terrain, severe and fluctuant weather. In the south central coast, uh, um, still they have um, the mountains there, but then the climate here is more pleasant than um, the north central coast. Um, the climate in the north central coast, as you can see here, the climate is cold and rainy in winter and hot, dry in summer. Because in summer, as you, we all know, we have the Laotian um, wind blowing from Lao, right? So the, the temperature might go very high, up to more than 40 degrees Celsius here, but the humidity is really low. While in the, in the south central coast uh, provinces, the climate is, is much more um, convenient, is mu much more comfortable. All right. And these geography features, uh, besides these features, we will look at um, the second one, the second um, aspect, which, are, which is the people. Um, in these two areas, we have a lot of different ethnic minorities groups, especially in the north. We have 25 different groups living in the area. And um, the population is distributed unevenly from the east to the west. Normally, the king people would live in, in the coastal plain, the, the plain that is near the, the sea, right? While in the south central coast, um, you see that it is ethnically dominated by the Vietnamese people, or the king people. So, um, they're mostly king people. And the, some of the mi uh, ethnic minorities, they mainly Cham, the Cham people, they would live in, um, in some provinces like Phan Giang, Bình Thuận, or Bình Định. So more to the south, and um, other other minorities which um, has fewer or, or fewer like less fewer people, they would live in the mountainous areas in the west. So you will see that um, most of the population in this area choose to live in the cities and towns, and now um, only thirty one percent, thirty one point six percent, sorry, and most of the the other part um, are distributed in different. If different um, parts of the regions. Um, with these features, the economy in these two regions uh, would, as you can see here, has some similarities, like um, the wet rice agriculture, the processing industry, or um, some other, other things like animal uh, husbandry, often developed in small scale, okay? And uh, for the North Central Coast, they, they have um, some, some kind of industrial crops because they are in the mountainous area that they have. So, for example, the, um, they can grow coffee, tea, or rubber in some of the provinces in the North Central Coast. And um, talking about the, in general, we can see that the South Central Coast would have better um, uh, generally, a better economy than compared to the one um, the, compared to the north central coast. This is also due to the um, the condition of the um, the natural geography and also the the people who are living there as well. Okay, so um, we have covered six already, and the last two the last two regions that we have left. Um, is the one, firstly, is the one that I mentioned earlier about coffee, right? Um, I guess that you can remember the Central Highland, which is a very important, um, not, not really important, but the, a very special region, to put it correct. 
So why do I say that it's special? Um, it has different features that, that is not similar to any of the other regions in the country. You can see that it has the border with, um, with Cambodia to the west, right? And also it's next to the south central coast um, region to the, to the east. And with um, the diversity in terms of culture in, the, in this region, even though they don't have so many people living there, but then um, the culture is really rich. If you have the, had the chance to go to some of the provinces in the region, like um, like some uh, like Zalai or Kantum or a very famous one is Bulme Tuat, right? You can see that um, even though they're in the same area in the same region, but because um, they the people is quite scattered and the population um, include quite diverse um, ethnic minority groups, so the culture here is very diverse. Um, in terms of geography, you can see that in this, um, in this region, mostly there are forests with biological diversity and large potential for tourism. Um, every year there are a lot of tourists, especially foreign tourists, visiting the, um, the region for, in order to understand more about the culture of the ethnic minorities group here. Um, for the climate, um, because here, in this region, they have different plateaus and with different heights. So you can see that the climate is, is quite diverse. Um, in general, they have two seasons, like the rainy season and the dry, and the dry season. But in, in different plateaus with different heights, the climate or the weather is relatively cool and rainy during the year. So um, in some plateaus like Lam Dong, um, which we have that lot, right? The atmosphere is really pleasant all year round. And that's why a lot of tourists choose to come to that lot um, for the holidays. Uh, in terms of the people, we can see here that um, this area is really rich. Um, and we, it is called the multi-ethnic and multicultural area with 47 ethnic groups living. And the ethnic groups here, um, are really varied, including Bana, Jarai, Ede, Geha, and, and many others. In the, um, however, in, because of the limitation or the disadvantage in terms of geography, in terms of the um, position of the region, so um, this people in the region have quite lower living and educational standards in comparison with the other, other regions of the country. Um, some of the difficulties that people would, would have to like, endure in their li everyday life is, um, are the difficulties in transportation, in terms of geography, and also in terms of um, how the ways to earn their living. So let's look at next, the economy. Um, with the potential of the region, we can see that it's um, it's appropriate for the people here to, to grow some industrial crops like coffee, like pepper, like cashew, and these would help to Im improve and um, the, develop the economy in the region. Uh, with the diverse system of the waterfall here in the region would help to, uh, it, it is the valuable resources for hydropower, which provide the um, electricity for not only the region, but also the neighboring region as well. However, um, as I mentioned earlier, some of the problems like um, the lack of um, high-skilled labor, the poor infrastructure, and, and the mountainous um, terrain, the mountainous um, terrain would, are some of the problems that the area would have to face with and um, are some of the difficulties that hinder the development of the economy. Okay, we now come to the last one. The very last one, which is, as I said, one of the most developed, um, the one of the regions that has the most developed economy, and also um, the region that has one of the important uh, cities in the country, which is Ho Chi Minh City. So it is the southeast. 
Um, looking at the, again, we, if you look at, looking at the position, we can see that this is a very important transportation hub. The region itself is very important. It, it is a hub itself because it has the border with, um, it is the neighboring um, sub-region with, with one of the largest um, region in Vietnam that is the Mekong River Delta. It has the border with, the, with Cambodia to the west and also it is the way out, um, it has the Southeast Sea to the east. So um, this is an important hub in terms of good exchange and also counter exchange with not only the neighboring regions, but also the neighboring country as well. Um, in terms of climate, this region has quite favorable um, climate, which is the equatorial climate with, with high temperature and mostly no change um, all the year round. So it's quite comfortable living here. Um, for in terms of the people, um, this region has the highest population growth rate in the country, we have to say. And you know that Ho Chi Minh City is the, one of the places where many of the people in the neighboring um, sub-regions and provinces would like to move in in order to look for uh, employment opportunities. So it's um, really highly uh, densely populated in the big cities here. Um, in this region, they also have quite diverse um, ethnic minority groups living in, especially those like Tai Cham, um, Zhao or Nung or Khmer, living in the, some of the mountainous area in some neighboring provinces. In terms of the economy, like I said, it is most significant development co uh, compared to other regions in, in Vietnam. And here in this region, they have educational, scientific, technological uh, institution, um, many economic centers, industrial zones, and developing urban system located here. All of these will promote the service in industry in the region. Um, Besides these areas, they, also, um, they are also able to grow some of the in industrial plants like um, rubber coffee in some of the mountainous provinces in the region. So um, this region, is, we say that it, it is one of the most advantageous um, region in terms of economy development. And it also has um, the economy that is quite developed um, in comparison with other regions in Vietnam. So um, when we come to the last one, do you have a feeling that we, we are having a geography lesson? Okay, it's quite, it's quite similar to what you have learned in, earlier in, um, in high school maybe. Um, but as I said, because we would need to understand all of these features and you will see later in our course that these, all of these features would be used to, to analyze and to help us understand more about the culture of each of the region. So that's why even though um, it would take us some time to read the book and even to summarize and uh, to go over the different features in these regions, I think it's something that worth doing um, because later on, right in the next lesson about Vietnamese cuisine, you will see that in, with these features, with the understanding of these features, you will be able to analyze the differences in terms of the cuisine of different, different regions in Vietnam. Why the North have different cuisine um, in comparison with the people living in the South? Why the people in the, the central of the country, like the, the North um, Central Coast and the South Central Coast, they, they tend to eat more spicy food? Okay, so those are the things that we will explore later in our fourth lesson. All right. To summarize this part, um, I would like to just give out some quick questions just to check whether you follow um, the video closely. The first question that I would like to challenge a little bit, which region has the most provinces out of the eight um, sub-regions that we have discussed earlier? Which do you think, or which, uh, according to your memory, which is which has the most provinces out of everything, all right? So, 
and wait for your answer. Um, to answer this, if you need to, if you can answer right away, then I can tell that you will, you are the one who follow the video closely. If you don't remember, don't worry, you can go back to the previous slide and find out that it's the Mekong River Delta. With how many provinces? 13 provinces. So this is the region that has the most province in, in Vietnam and also what the region that, that we said is very advantageous in, um, in terms of the condition to develop the economy, right? Okay, let's come to the second question. Which region is most ethnically varied? Now be careful, this question is rather tricky because you might you might confuse uh, between the two. That is what I expect, but, but you might not, all right? Um, we have mentioned two regions with quite, with uh, the large number of ethnic minority groups living in, but the, if you still remember, the exact answer for this question is the Central Highland with 47 ethnic minority groups living in harmony with each other. So uh, the Central Highland is the region with only five provinces, but as you can see, there are so many ethnic groups living there. And um, the population of this area, as you know, is not, is not um, much, but then um, it is very varied in terms of the ethnic people who live, who choose to live here. And also um, that's why the culture in this area is really unique and um, worth exploring, okay? So um, you can give yourself some more quiz to check your understanding, and I hope that you will spend some more time um, reading more details in the book um, to understand more about the features of these eight sub-regions in Vietnam. Okay, um, with this, let's move on to the second part about craft villages. It's a long way before we come here, right? Um, as you know that uh, crab villages has long is, has been very important in the Vietnamese history. And um, mentioning crab villages, I believe that you can, in your head now, may have some of the names or some of the crab villages that you know around, maybe around Hanoi or maybe um, in the province or in the area that you're living in. So let me show you some Photos, this is silk weaving, this is, what is it, okay, we call wood carving. Um, another one which is also very popular is ceramic and pottery, okay, and the last one that is mentioned in your book, bronze casting. So, um, Vietnamese people are very good um, craftsmen, we can say so. And as you know, craft villages appeared quite early in, in the Vietnamese history. And within um, the limitation of this um, lesson, I'm going to just go briefly through only two of the, um, the craft village, or no, not the craft village, but the, the crafts um, that, that you are going to uh, read in your book. In your book, we have, you have more than that, but then uh, here, let's only mention two of them. The very first one that I would like to mention in this lesson, and I guess that it is also popular, then you, you also might know a lot, and some of you might have also vi um, visited the craft villages that produce ceramic and pottery, like um, Ba Chang in, um, in, in the outbreak of Hanoi or some other pottery village that you might know. So um, to begin with the um, ceramic and pottery village, I would like to start with some of the numbers related to this kind of craft and see, can, can you tell me your, uh, your guess? What do you think the numbers or the figures are related to, okay? The very first one, is the 11th century. What do you think is related to? Any guesses? All right. The answer is, it is the time when um, 
the first crab villages are found in Vietnam, and um, it's the area around Hanoi. So quite early in the history, right? The second number that I would like to mention here that might help to remember, 3,500, what do you think this figure uh, refers to? Okay, a few seconds to think. If you scan through the book, you can find this number quite easily in the part about the future of the crab villages. But it is the number of crab villages in Vietnam. Amazing. That's quite a big number, right? 3,500. And the very last one, 12 million. I think this, this one is may, maybe the most, um, the easiest to guess. Okay, and it's also in the same part when you scan the book and you look into the part of um, the uh, future of the crowd villages in, in, in Vietnam. It's the number, the rough number of people who, who are involved in um, the crowd, who, who are employed or work in the crowd villages in Vietnam. So with this big number, I believe that we can see the importance of the crowd villages, not only to the Vietnamese economy, but also to the culture of the country, okay? So um, to start with ceramics and pottery, let's look at the timeline that shows the development of the crafts. Um, as you can see, it appears from the ancient, Viet um, the ancient time. So like in, uh, in prehistoric times, most of the designs on, on the surface of the ceramic um, if, if you, you have the chance to look at the ceramic at, the, at that time or the pottery at that time, you can see that most of the design on the surface um, were created with the sticks. Um, they, they use the stick to, to carve on the product while the product is still wet. So it's really simple, a very simple way of, um, of creating the ceramic and pottery. And all the pro um, pottery and ceramics at that time, um, the products, they all have, they are all the things that are used um, in, uh, for cooking or used for, to store food. So mostly um, for, has useful application for household duties and for cooking. Um, if anyone is uh, interested in archaeology and you look at the, um, you have the chance to look at some of the artifacts found in the archaeological sites, you can see that the, um, the, the craft, the ceramic and pottery, date back as far as the middle of the Stone Age um, period. This, so it means it's like, like 10,000 years ago, so it's really long. And next, when it comes to the period of Chinese domination during the 10 centuries um, that, we, that we are under the domination of China, then the Vietnamese also went on producing ceramics using their, their own techniques but also they, they have the chance to learn the new techniques and adapt the techniques uh, from China to create their products, to make their products more beautiful and um, more varied as well. Moving on next uh, to the early imperial era, which is the Li and Chen dynasty. This is the era that, you, that, that witnessed the development, the most prosperous um, period of the um, ceramic and pottery crop villages in Vietnam. So um, you see that pottery in this, er um, in this era experienced wonderful achievements in terms of the design, in terms of the quality, and they were not only sold um, in, uh, domestic, in the domestic market, but are also exported to other countries as well. And um, later on in the in about, from about the 15th centuries onwards, in the late imperial era, this is also, um, also the, the era that witnessed the development of ceramics and pottery production, especially in the Nguyen dynasty. You see that the porcelain in the Nguyen dynasty is very famous um, to people in other countries. Okay, so just a very brief summary of the development of um, the craft. Um, you can have more. In, you can read for more information um, to understand more about the history and see how important it is in our economy. Um, 
Moving on to the next and also the also the last one that I would like to mention here today due to the time limit, right? Um, silk weaving with very famous village that I believe everyone knows, which is located very near Hanoi, right? If you have time and if you have the chance to go there um, to Vạn Phúc village, you will see that um, there are a lot of beautiful products made from silk. For now, um, I would like to share with you some of the comparison between two quite very famous, or, or we can say two of the most famous um, silk villages in Vietnam. The very first one, like I said, Vạn Phúc in Hà Đông, and the second one is uh, Bảo Lộc in Lâm Đồng. The silk in these two, um, we can say that these two villages or the, these two areas um, has some differences in terms of both the origin and the characteristic of the fabric. So for Vạn Phúc, um, we know that it, it originates from a very long time ago, right? More than 10,000 years. And um, the very first person who initiated who initiated the craft was uh, Miss Lati Nguyen, an official's wife, and later on she passed on the weaving silk craft down to local people. Um, in Actually on the slide we have a video, but then um, I don't think that we have enough time to watch it now, so I'm going to share it with you um, on Facebook so that you can, in our Facebook group, so that you can watch the, the process um, that that people create the, the silk, um, the, the fabric, from the very first step of, of raising the silk worms to the last step when it comes to the final products, all right? So um, for now, just look at some of the features of these two villages and then you can watch the process later and then we will do the summary. Okay, for Bao Lộc Lâm Đồng, um, the silk um, production years started quite late only in the 1960s. And, um, and one surprise, maybe one surprise to us is that it's not um, initiated by Vietnamese people, but the foundation was, was laid by the Vietnamese, uh, by the Japanese, I'm sorry, by the Japanese. And later on, the Japanese came to seek for the most su uh, suitable land for silk industry in Vietnam. And they um, also, they, they were also the one who invested and were also the ones who who, um, who guide the people and who initiated the the uh, crop village or the silk production here in Bảo Lộc, Lâm Đồng. Um, in terms of the development, we see that for Vạn Phúc today, the Vạn Phúc silk is very popular both in Vietnam and, and in uh, some foreign markets like uh, France, Thailand, Indonesia and, and many Eastern European countries and it thrived during the 20th century. Why for Bao Lộc? You see that the Bao Lộc seal has gone abroad, has gone international to many different um, like, um, markets. And also um, the Bao Lộc seal is used in, in many diff important um, occasions. Like for example, it was worn by the APEC official in 2006 and 2017. It also appeared in many um, we will say many difficult markets where, who's, uh, where there are a lot of meticulous customers, but this, the silk is still accepted. So it means that the quality that we produce here um, with the development of technology and, um, and the modern equipment, then we in Bao Lộc, they were able to produce higher quality products and it attract the attention from the meticulous customer. Um, overseas, not only in Vietnam, um, okay? And it is even used to produce the kimonos for the Japanese or the head car, uh, the head scarves for the Europeans and, and many others, okay? So um, with the, their importance in the economy and also in terms of culture of the um, crop villages, what should be the future of the crop village? You know that um, there are a lot of difficulties that the crop villages need to face these days. Um, to name just a few here, some of the most um, 
like typical ones, the first one that we can mention is the shortage of human resources. Um, in many of the crab villages, the young generation, the younger generation, they no longer want to inherit the the skill or the the business from their their ancestor animal. They want to go to the big cities and start their career there. So that's why in the crab villages, in in many of the crab villages, there is a shortage of human resources working in um, in the area. Um, also. Paired with the difficulties in building brand recognition, uh, both in domestic markets and especially in international markets, it makes um, the crop villages or it creates the challenges for the crop villages to, to bring their products um, to the appropriate markets. The other um, obstacles that they have to face right now, um, like outdated technology, the unstrained labors or the environmental pollution, especially for um, the crop villages like the bronze casting, it, it affects the environment a lot if you, if you um, have the chance to, to learn more about the village. So these are the obstacles that the crop villages have to face and have to address when they want to um, when they want to thrive in the in the modern um, economy and in the modern era. So my question for you to think before the discussion is, what solution do you suggest to address the problems that traditional crop villages are facing? Of course, in order to answer this question, um, you will need to do further research into more specific crop villages. And this will be linked to um, your assignment, your very first assignment after the field trip one, after you have um, visited one of the crop village of your choice, then we would come back and analyze the problems as well as the possible solution that you would like to suggest um, to maintain and also to develop the crop village um, that you choose, okay? So for now, just think about this, do more research if you have time um, about the crab villages that we have mentioned and also some others that, that you have on your book. But later on, um, you can choose the one that you like the most and then focus only on that village, all right? So um, to end this lesson, I would like also again to give you another quiz. And this quiz is design, was designed by um, three students who had attended this course in the previous semester. So. Big thanks goes to Bao Ha, Hui Huan, and Feng Ai. Um, they are from different departments in our, in our uh, university, but they have created the quiz for us. So for, uh, for now, please go to Kahoot and enter the code here, 0569732, and please try the quiz. Um, just to see, you can have two options. Uh, first, you can do the quiz right now to see how well you can remember the details from, uh, from, from the lecture from the beginning until now. The second choice is that you can go back and read more, read the book, read the chapter uh, combined with the slides today, with the video today, and then you try the quiz. See whether you, you can achieve better results. So um, the quiz is going to ex expire in... Um, if I remember correctly, um, by the end of this week, I'm going to extend the deadline until the end of next week so that if you don't um, have time to do it right now, you can still do it later, all right? So if you have any further questions regarding this unit or um, the previous unit that we have discussed in class and in the previous video, feel free to send me a message on um, Facebook or even email me, all right? Thank you very much for attending and see you in the next lesson. Okay, Emya.